Okay. All right. So recording has started. Well, welcome everybody. I'm going to show you how to get and uh, install and use the Type It In app to give better feedback in less time. And uh, I hope everybody can see the PowerPoint uh, on my screen. There are three versions that you can buy from uh, this company called WaveGit. And I just use the uh, cheapest one and it does exactly what I need it to do. And what's nice about it is that this is not an annual fee. This is something that you just buy and that you uh, own. I've had mine since uh, 2011 and have never received any type of uh, come-ons or anything from them. The free trial uh, is 30 days and it warns you every few days that you have not uh, purchased it and that your all the, all your hard work will go down the tubes if you don't but at least it would give you a chance to try it and see if it's something that you you liked uh, I would uh, urge you to download it directly from WaveGit. here's their uh, their URL because I know that uh, some have had trouble in the past downloading it from third-party sites and it coming with um, viruses and things. So I definitely would say go directly to the company to, to do it. Now you have a choice when you uh, are using the, um, the website as to whether or not you want to download it to a flash drive or to your laptop or desktop. And I've done it both ways. Uh, I use the flash drive because if I'm in a classroom and want to do some grading while students are taking a test or something, I can just pop the flash drive in and load it uh, directly from the um, uh, flash drive onto whatever computer I'm using and it runs right off the flash drive. It doesn't take up any, any space on the, the computer that I've popped it into. I also have it on my uh, lap, on my desktop, um, at work and I'm just going to slide it over from the other so you can see what it looks like. It's just a floating toolbar and I have it arranged in this long format so that if I have a Word document open I can just uh, have this on the side and pop my comments directly into it. But I'm going to go back to the PowerPoint for just a minute and uh, talk a little bit more about the uh, way that this this actually works. So when uh, you are uh, launching it, you are simply going to find the program on the uh, flash drive. I have it in a folder called Type It In, and then you're just going to pick the application and it's going to launch uh, as soon as you double click on that. And if you um, have it on a desktop or a laptop. It's going to uh, save itself in a folder called Type It In. And you can go into that folder and these top three files, the ENC, the DAT, and the config sys files, if you transfer those four and the application from that flash drive, you can actually put it on multiple machines. You could put it on a desktop or um, a laptop. All of these other things uh, get created as you go along. They're backup files and text documentation and things like that that will just automatically load with the application. But once you have these three, and you'll notice they, they're on the same date because that's the last time I saved anything, you can move your button set to all those other machines and you can copy back and forth. If you make changes on one, you can copy them back and forth. Um, that's kind of an advanced user thing, but I'm just letting people know that once you buy it, it, it has great flexibility and you don't have to keep buying it for every machine that you use. So let me show you how this works. I've got a student, this is an actual student paper, and uh, I've just changed the name to uh, protect the innocent or the guilty here. And so as, as I'm reading along, uh, if I see something that I want to uh, bring to the student's attention, I can 
Let me just read through here a little bit and see if there's something. The first thing I want to tell the student is that this thing needs to be uh, in double spacing. And I usually write uh, in the student's uh, paper in blue. And so I have this note that tells the student to how to highlight the entire document and get it to double space. And I also want the student to add a page header up here. And so I have a note that I can just add and I can put it in any color that I, I want. And so you can see that things that I would have to type for hours and hours, I can just insert directly in. And when I get to the end of this paper, I even have the end note that I want to put in here under, this is paper two, so it's under P2 draft note. And all I have to do is personalize the note for the student by adding a name and anything that uh, is particular to this student, but it gives the directions for what I want them to do and things like that. And as you can see from the floating toolbar, uh, I have all kinds of grammar notes and anything that I want to. And it is just wonderful not to have to type all this stuff, obviously, but also it gives me a consistency in my grading and it gives me a chance to give them far more feedback than they would get if I uh, we're having to manually type all this because I just couldn't simply uh, do that for as many papers as I have to do. Now, the, some of the beautiful features here are that you can edit these buttons. You just uh, click on it and choose edit and I can change what's in the note. All I do is the name and the note itself. I don't do all these other things. You can do macros, you can do all, all kinds of things. You can even uh, record uh, little things for them. But then all I have to do once I've made the change is save. If I want to do a new button, if I um, right click on any button, I just choose new button and I get this box and I just change the name add it in, and it's gonna come in, you see where it came in, where it says new one at the bottom? And uh, once you fill this in and you save it, uh, it would give it the new name that you put in up here. If you have already made comments and other assignments, you can just copy and paste them right into this block and it will uh, take care of it for you. Um, it's, that's a fast way. You may be looking at all of these buttons and saying, wow, that took hours and hours. Uh, it didn't because I was already writing these comments anyway. And each time that I have a comment that I think I'm going to use more than once, I just make a button and, and add it in so that I have it for, for later. The, uh, this little area here, if I right click there, I can sort the buttons to keep them in alphabetical order so that they're easier to find when I want them. I can also uh, form a new group. Let's say that you have three classes and there, there are comments that are specific to that particular class. You can arrange the buttons just for that uh, particular class or uh, maybe you wanted to do it by assignment and there were particular comments you make on assignment one and particular comments you make on assignment two. You just form a group and you can arrange the buttons any way that you would, you would like to do that. It's, um, as you can see, incredibly simple and uh, doesn't cost a whole lot and you can put it on multiple machines. You can uh, use it in a public computer as long as you have uh, USB access. So there's, there's not a lot for me to tell other than just to show you how, how uh, much time it can save you and to think about what the possibilities are. Uh, it has you know, many other capabilities uh, that uh, you can explore on your own, but I thought that it would be useful just to see what it looked like and, and know that such a thing exists. So I'll take questions if um, anyone has any. Um, I can, can I just ask, I know you're bringing the files back and forth on a USB, so there's no real way to 
like log in and save things except kind of bringing the files back and forth? It, am I, would that be correct? It's, it's not on a cloud. It's simply okay. on the stick or on the uh, desktop. Okay. I have it set up, Debbie, so that uh, when I launch uh, my, my desktop, it automatically launches because I use it all day. Okay. But at home on my laptop, I just stick the USB in and click uh, in the type it in folder on the application and it launches. Okay, thanks. So, Bob, are you constantly updating what's on the flash drive? Absolutely. And I'll give you an example. Uh, in 099, they have to um, turn in a portfolio. And that's kind of like the, the, the um, touchdown line for them. And I want to remind them every time I... Uh, send something back that that portfolio is due April 27th and save this for your portfolio. And I also, I have a date at the bottom that I accepted it so that that's their, their indication that they don't have to revise anymore, that it's ready to go into the portfolio. And that changes of course every semester. And so I can just change that uh, right in the, in the button and not type that every single time, um, which, which is a nice feature. You can also, I should have mentioned this earlier, you can also put in uh, HTML tags in here if you want to, uh, if, let's say that the note needs italics or bold or uh, a hot link. You can put the HTML tags in there and it, it will uh, take care of that for you too. Okay, great. I didn't know, uh, I know that the, the the folks who are watching live are very computer savvy and uh, none of this is um, going to be daunting. For those of uh, that watch it later who may not be computer savvy, you don't have to do any of that. You don't have to transfer it between machines. You don't have to put in HTML tags or anything. You can just type whatever you want and it just types it. Uh, on a slow machine, you can even see it letter by letter, but on on a fast machine, it just kind of basically uh, appears. Okay, great. All right. Okay. So Debbie, Thanks, Bob. Questions? No. No, I'm good. Thank you, Bob. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Mm -hmm.